Hi there, my name's Bruce Rain from Brankus Creations, and in this video I'll be testing out this Vivor SC240M thermal camera. I use a thermal camera primarily for electronics, for detecting short circuits or defective components that are getting hotter than they should. But there are a whole range of uses for a thermal camera, for checking home insulation, detecting leaks, observing wildlife. You can even use them as a night vision camera because they can detect subtle differences in temperature enough to display shapes in complete darkness. In truth, I think they're incredibly useful tools, but have probably been a bit expensive for a lot of people to consider buying one. But with the lower cost units available, such as this Vivo unit, they become much more accessible. So let's have a look inside the box. Now, full disclosure, I have actually had this open already. Uh, as soon as this arrived, I was so keen to use it, I took it out and started using it. And I have been using it solidly now for the last few weeks. So if this doesn't look brand spanking new, that's the reason. Uh, so let's just open up this box. Nice slow action going on there. And we have included a Kingston uh, 64 gigabyte SD card. So that's a nice little addition. I've got a product certificate here. I have a calibration certificate here. And then we have a little manual uh, <clears throat> describing all of the functions in a couple of languages. We have got USB-A to USB-C cable and then the thermal camera itself. And here it is here in that familiar sort of trigger handle there. We've got a little flip up rubbery bit here and inside there we've got the USB-C port and we have the SD card slot as well. And on the front here we've got our little screen protector which I Resisted the temptation to take that off before, but I'm going to take great pleasure in removing it now. So off she comes. And uh, and that's uh, that's what it looks like. Now this one comes in two different flavors. Uh, there is one which is a thermal camera only, and then there is one that has a thermal camera as well as a normal uh, visible light camera. And then you have the ability, if you want to, to overlay the thermal on top of the visible light. This is the one that has the, uh, the visible light thermal camera overlay. So this one's a little bit more expensive, but has that extra feature there. It also comes with this very nice little padded bag. Pop that into there. Very nifty. So let's get this SD card, put it inside and we'll get testing. This is clearly idiot proof. Now, one thing I do know from using thermal cameras uh, is that when you switch them on, there's typically a delay before they actually start uh, doing the thermal imaging. So I'm gonna switch this on now and we'll check and see how long that delay is. So pressing the red button to power it on. So we've got the screen coming on. We've got a nice little Vivor logo, logo there. And, and then we wait. All right, so that is the visible light camera is working. Uh, so uh, that's good, but we are still waiting for the thermal imaging side of it to fire up. It's actually got system is initializing. Okay, now we have thermal imaging happening there. So that's how long it took for that thermal camera to actually come online. The thermal camera controls are very straightforward. We have our power button here for switching it off and on. We have our little torch or flashlight button there. We have a play button here. It allows you to play back recorded images or video. And we have the return button. So if you are selecting a menu item, you can return back out of the menu by pressing that. And then we have our little controller here. Uh, and this has a center button and then up, down, left and right. And if we press the center button, uh, that brings up 
the menu and then you can left and right to choose different menu options. Um, and then if you want to select one, you press the center button to select it. And then obviously if you want to leave, just press the return button. So very, very intuitive controls there. Now by default, when you switch this on, you'll end up with this little center point here and that is showing you up in the top corner there what the temperature is at that center point. But then you will also have a little green dot dancing around the place, a little red dot dancing around the place, and they are showing you the minimum and maximum temperatures in the area that you are currently scanning. Uh, should you actually want to get rid of those, you can do that by going into the menu and selecting measurements, and then you can go across here to close. And when we do that, they will then disappear. You still have this little scale at the side showing you what the uh, temperatures are, the, showing you the different color scheme and what the temperatures are for the color scheme. Um, but if you actually want that live reading, uh, once again, you can switch that on. You have the ability to switch on just the center one, just the hottest point or just the coldest point, or you can have all three on at the same time. Just be aware that if you are using these little markers, they get saved with the image. So if you want to save uh, the thermal image to the SD card, uh, if you have these little markers on, they will be part of the image and there's no way of switching that off, which is, for me, it's probably the, the main downside of this. Uh, I would have liked the option to be able to save the images so that you just see the thermal uh, image without these little overlays on them. Um, but, uh, but it's a relatively minor thing. Uh, if you do want to save an image, just a single press on this trigger will take a still image. And if you want to shoot video, uh, you press and hold down, that initiates the video recording. And then to stop it again, just a single press to stop it. And then with each of these, it gives you the option of whether you want to save what you've just recorded. So I'm just gonna save that. You can, within the preferences, set them to automatically save or have it ask you each time. There is here a little flashlight or torch as we call it here. If you press and hold that down, you'll get these little LEDs coming on the front there. That's quite handy because a lot of the time people are using these for um, checking out uh, if they've got uh, areas of the house where there's heat getting, getting out, like under a door or something like that. So you may find people walking around uh, at night in the dark with these. Um, and so that gives you that option to uh, switch that little flashlight on. And I will just switch that off again. Now, as you can see, I am only viewing thermal imaging here at the moment. If I wanted to overlay them, I can do that from the menu here. And we go across to the second one, second menu option, which is view mode. And then you have the option there of doing the infrared fuse, they refer to it as fuse. So it's fusing the two together, the, the visible and your thermal together. You have the option for picture in picture. So you have the thermal on the outside and uh, sorry, the uh, visible on the outside and the thermal on the inside. Uh, you have visible. So you're only getting the visible light camera there. And then the last one is alignment. And that allows you to, uh, if your uh, images are slightly out of alignment, your thermal and your visible, you can uh, set that alignment to get them uh, in line. And that does depend on how far away uh, you're actually um, shooting because you've got your thermal camera there and your visible camera there. And if you're really, really close, uh, if you're looking at something really, really close, um, you may have to adjust that alignment. If you're further away, um, that alignment's not as important. So uh, um, you've got that option to do that in that menu there as well. I mentioned before that I do actually have another thermal camera and it's a little one that attaches to the bottom of my iPhone and I can take images directly to the phone using an app. Now, while that might seem very convenient, there are some inconveniences with it as well. Firstly, I find the connection between the camera and the phone a little bit flaky at times. The other is that it has its own battery, doesn't draw power from the phone, and so the battery just runs out constantly. With something like this, which has its own battery source, this will run for ages, and I will do some tests later on to see just how long we get out of a full charge, but you can run this for ages, and that's really convenient because the number of times that I've gone to do some thermal imaging, I grab my little thermal imager, I plug it to the bottom of my phone, 
and then the battery's flat. And then I have to sit there waiting for the thing to charge before I can actually look at what I wanna, wanna see. Um, so I see a definite convenience in having a separate unit like this. And here is the really interesting thing. This unit here costs the same, if not a little bit less, than that other thermal camera that I had. So I do consider this to be incredibly good, good value. Another really important thing is this has a 240 by 180 pixel thermal imager. The, one that I ha the other one that I have is less than half that. And the problem with that is that the thermal image is so low resolution that you kind of need the visible image on top in order to see what it is you're looking at. No such issue with this. This resolution is high enough so that you really can just look at this with just the thermal image without the overlay and know exactly what you're looking at. If you're wanting to get images off this, you can do that one of two ways. You can either plug this into your computer using the USB cable and it will come up as a device on your, uh, on your computer's desktop. Uh, or you can take the SD card out and copy them off as if it was a digital camera. Um, either way works, either way it's just as convenient. Okay, so let's just take a quick tour of the other menu items. Uh, so we've already covered measurement, we have already covered view mode, uh, we have palette, and that's where you get to choose which color scheme you want for your infrared image. Uh, I like to just go with the standard iron, it reminds me of the Predator movie. Uh, we have also system settings and here there are a whole bunch of settings uh, where you can configure your device uh, things like auto power off uh, what language uh, the display brightness date and time uh, and what temperature um, uh, unit you want to use whether you're celsius or fahrenheit i should also mention the emissivity setting this is a setting to compensate for objects that might give an inaccurate temperature reading because they aren't just radiating heat they might be reflecting heat as well. For example, if I point this at some shiny metal, it looks hot, when in fact it's quite cool. That heat is actually a reflection. Virtually all objects reflect some heat, but some a lot more than others. So if you're needing real temperature accuracy, you may want to change the emissivity setting to match the substance you're measuring. For example, maybe you want to set this camera up to detect body temperature, so that you can see if someone who passes in front has a fever. You can look up the emissivity setting for skin from the manual, change that in the settings to make sure your measured temperatures are as accurate as possible. Now let's take a look at some videos that I shot with a thermal camera. Here is the door to my wife's home office, and as you can see, she likes to keep it pretty toasty in there. This is an interesting one because this is me pointing the camera at the ceiling and you can clearly see a blue square. So there is clearly some insulation missing from that point, something that I'll need to attend to. And here is a cat. His name is Socks. This is the heating element of my electric blanket. Here is a saucepan sitting on an induction cooktop. And once we switch it on, you can clearly see that heat building up. Here is the front door of my house. It's winter at the moment, and you can see the cold coming in through the gap under the door. This is an interesting thing. You can actually use the camera as a stud finder, as it clearly shows the timber beams up in the ceiling. I decided to take a walk around the front of the house. As I mentioned, it's the middle of winter and you can clearly see how much heat is getting out from the windows. I also found this very peculiar circular dot. I think there's a hole in the wall somewhere. On the whole, I'm really happy with the Vivo SC240M thermal camera. The 240 by 180 resolution is ample for getting a clear picture of what you're observing, and the refresh rate is very good. My other thermal camera's resolution is much lower and slower to refresh, and it's often hard to figure out what you're looking at, but not so with the Vivo. Compared to some other units, it's a little on the large side, but it feels really solid. It feels like it could withstand a bit of mistreatment, so it would be good on a work site. I've been using it in my workshop and I have no issue with the size. If it were any smaller, I'd probably lose it. It has a standard tripod mount hole on the bottom, which is great if you need to have it fixed somewhere. The battery life is sensational. This is my biggest grievance with my other thermal camera.
While it may not be a fair comparison given how small my other camera is, the battery on this Vivo is excellent. In my tests, I got more than 12 hours use out of a single charge. Even after the red battery indicator came up telling me to charge it, I still got at least a couple of hours of use from it. I also really like the carrying case. Once again, great for someone who might be taking it for use on site. I have a few issues, but they're not major. If you're taking a still image, it saves all of the graphic overlays on the image. If you're saving video, it saves none of them. This would be nice if it could be configured so you could choose if you want the overlays or not. The other issue I have is with the video format it stores. It's .h264 format. This is a type of MP4 compression, but it's like storing the data without instructions about what that data is. I was able to view the video with VLC player, but it had no idea what size to display it, so it was all distorted. I ended up using the video conversion software Handbrake to convert it into a standard MP4 format, but I had to set the video dimensions manually so that it would convert with the correct aspect ratio. Maybe this is something that can be resolved in a future firmware update, but it was a frustration. I mentioned that there are different versions of this thermal camera. This unit, the SC240M, has the ability to display a hybrid image of visible light fused with the thermal image. This can help to identify what you're looking at and where the heat is coming from. The SC240N doesn't have a visible light camera, but still has the same 240 by 180 thermal camera. For my purposes, the SC240N would probably suffice. In all the applications that I use a thermal camera, the visible image overlay hasn't been needed. That's not to say that it's unnecessary. For some, the visible thermal image hybrid will be needed, just not for me. I'd like to thank Vivo for sending me this thermal camera. I received the camera for free, but I've not been paid for my opinions, which are all open and honest. You can find links in the description where you can buy the Vivo thermal camera along with a discount code. Thanks for watching.